barely glanced at this um, as I woke up this morning, so I haven't gone to go into detail or testing, but I'm going to try to do that right now. So let's just see what's happening. Alright, go to 2 update, 6.8 B, July 11th. <clears throat> it was like, I woke up pretty late, so I think when I woke up it was just barely out. But I haven't really seen anyone do a review or anything, that's why I wanted to do one publicly and like post it up on my YouTube later. Alright, timber saw strength gain reduced from 2.1 to 1.8. That just seems like a minor nerf to me. The did Moonduck do it? I don't know. Anyway, the reactive armor was like the main buff that made timber extremely difficult to deal with, along with like timber chains cooldown being reduced. Just consecutive buffs over different patches. There was a lot of things that made him strong. <clears throat> this is just going to be a minor nerf to him. I don't think that he'll be picked any less than he is already now. So that's, overall that's a little bit of a wash. Death Profit base strength reduced by 1. Spirit Siphon base health drain reduced from 16 to 14. These things seem minor as well. I think what they were going for when they nerfed it last patch was to reduce the damage and the drain. But people figured out they could just like get Veil of Discord. And because of that they were draining like... Not the same, but they were draining enough, and they were doing enough damage to make her viable with that build. And it also just seemed like a good path for her anyway, because it was giving her really good stats, armor, regen. There were some really nice builds opened up by that, like Soul Ring, Veil. Vale. So I, I think that it's very minor as well, but the thing about these patches in general is that when someone gets like a minor buff or a minor nerf psychologically whether I don't think it's conscious people start avoiding heroes or picking certain heroes and I think you know over the years Ice Frog has learned that so and the last thing I want to say about that is Death Prophet was pretty much I think the stat was that she was the most banned hero in the qualifiers which was Really, really surprising for TI. So, obviously, if she's getting banned that much, she m might get some attention. Okay. This one is the big one. This is really big. Metamorphosis mana cost increased from 50 to 100. That is, that is a quality life change that's really annoying. But that's not the biggest thing. Metamorphosis no longer lingers after reincarnation and death. And to me, that is c like completely neutering the hero. Because while Terrorblade is extremely strong, he's kind of like, you know, akin to Death Prophet or maybe Dragonite in that they're kind of ultimate dependent to become, to reach their full potential. I mean, not, not ultimate dependent, those two are, but in regards to Terrorblade, you know, he has to switch to the meta to start doing like actual scary DPS. Imagine if Death Prophet revived or maintained exorcism with Aegis. That's pretty much exactly what the old Terrorblade was. I found it ridiculous when I watched the games that a Terrorblade could, you know, die in meta, and I was caught off guard because I didn't actually know that mechanic. I know pro player or whatever, but I haven't really been paying much attention. I found it ridiculous that he was coming up back in meta. Because he his his Roche clear speed is extremely fast. His damage output's fast. The main advantage of having a Terrorblade on your team is that, like, with the Aegis, you can run up to their base, siege it with illusions, die in that time, like, not feel afraid at all, and then just revive and keep doing it again. Or in a fight, you can extend your life with Sunder, do some more damage, die, and come back, and still do insane damage. Like, there was no way to stop him unless you had some really good control. So, with this nerf I really feel like his pick rate might go down a lot because then there's like an obvious strategy to deal with the terror blade you know when you're against the terror blade he's going to have the Aegis like 9 times out of 10 because of this I think giving him Aegis is pretty much going to be useless like in the same way that you don't give Aegis to Death Prophet or 
to Dragon Knight. Just it doesn't make sense. They're just significantly weaker when I come out of it. But I think this is a really great change because another statistic from the qualifier was, and I'm I'm paraphrasing the statistic, but his win rate was like eighty percent or something ridiculous. Something about anything above. 60% in competitive is broken, and he was like beyond broken because he was being fit picked in the first two. So I really agree with this kind of change. And I'm glad they didn't make him feel clunky because I feel like when they nerf heroes and they make him feel clunky, that's a big mistake. <clears throat> Time dilation, mana cost increased from 50 to 75. The void, that's a little annoying. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. That's just. People have been opting out of the time dilation anyway as a second skill to max out because the time lock is just so strong. A lot of times time dilation doesn't play as much of a factor um, in games as it used to just because of the time lock. So he's more right click based and like disruption based. But overall like Void, he gets picked an insane amount. I don't think this is a nerf to nerf him out of the game. He'll still be picked in the first two, or banned even. So I don't think that'll change much. Astral Spirit Vision reduced from 450 to 400. Just another minor debuff, or minor nerf. I don't really think that's going to do much, to be honest. The whole advantage of the, Earth, the um, Elder Titan is the aura and the stomp. The aura pretty much shreds all the magic resist, all the all the armor gained from stats. Um, it's really good versus a lot of the popular heroes are now, Terrorblade. And you can have Butterfly Manta, 30 armor, whatever. It's, all, it's zero with the level 4 Elder Titan aura, so it's really no big deal. Uh, the spirit was probably like his least important skill. Beastmaster bore XP increased from 59 to 60, 70, 80, 90. I kind of like this change. Because I, th well, they've been neutering the BM bores like from patch to patch. I feel like they're just trying to punish um, the bores for dying and incentivize people for killing them. So, like, this would have been a really nice change back in the days where people didn't realize you could just Iron Talon jungle up to 6. Or like get insanely fast shotgun levels within the jungle. Because BM used to be actually a really big problem a couple patches ago. Because when he went in the offlane and he, he had two boars and you're playing like a normal support. Like let's just say you're playing an average support like... Not like Witch Doctor because Witch Doctor can deal with him fine. But maybe like Disruptor or something. Well he would push you out of lane really hard. And you would get punished... For not being able to kill his boars, because he could carefully micro it and deny, or just move him out of range, or just out DPS you straight up in one v one. So, I think this change doesn't affect the BM of late. Would have been nice to have now, like beforehand, but I think the BMs are just going to be in the jungle. Um, <clears throat> maybe if anything, like disrupting the Beastmaster's jungle becomes more viable, like. You know what I mean, you send a you send a four position support in there to counter his jungling out. Like, doesn't necessarily have to be like a bounty hunter or a Ricky, but you know, even a Marana or so. You kill this boar, and it's a little more rewarding. I think that's the main change or the main impact on the game that I see. Ricky's blink strike damage reduced from sixty, eighty, hundred, or twenty to fifty five, seventy, eighty five hundred. Uh, honestly, not that big of a change. I think that, like, after looking at Ricky a bit more and, like, seeing other people playing it, instead of, like, maxing out the smoke screen, I've been seeing, like, people leveling up, like, one or two smoke screen or even three, and then leveling up the blink strike for the cooldown, the damage. Um, just because it, it can be used aggressively, it can be used defensively to get out of situations as well. And, and um, I don't think this minor damage is going to change that utility of the hero. But anything to nerf Ricky is good. Seems like this patch is a lot of like really minor changes and some 
big changes like the meta. Probably the biggest one that impacts the meta right now. <laughs> no pun intended, holy shit. Okay. Nice. Thanks. Yo, Alanis, thanks for resub. 14 years, boys. Okay. Astral imprisonment damage increased from 75, 150, 225, 300, 200, 175, 250, 325. This is OD. And then Arcane Orb intelligence duration increased from 60 to 80. So I have I have to look at the um past notes. Let me see if I can find what else they did to Outward Outworld Destroyer. Or Devourer. I don't know what he's called anymore. Cause I know I know they did change some other stuff last patch, some minor things. Yeah. Don't these wikis usually have some history, whatever? What the f change? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So, when did they nerf him? Yeah, this is the nerf in 6.7, so they reduced the intelligence per level by 1. Increased the mana cost for each level of Arcane Orb. Reduced his cast range. Okay. And then after that, they made it pseudo-random aura. Then after that, they increased the Arcane Intelligence duration to 60 from 50 so now basically it's going from it was at 50 at base now it's 80 so that's about 30 seconds difference from where it was previously that's significant increased essence or mana bonus so this is probably the skill that you're going to level up increased astral imprisonment damage that's I don't think this matters much, the, the damage. So, pretty much the way I see these changes going is that he's kind of like a safe lane hero, and he kind of was tending to become that safe lane hero. Um, I think that this will help him lane versus heroes that he like previously destroyed. Like you used to see uh, OD versus like Void. You would safe lane the OD versus off lane voids and you would just like hit them with the orb a couple times and they'd run out of mana. And then you could imprison to like surround them or just finish them off. That was a really good strategy. Um, I think with items OD can still be viable. I think people started to like try to play OD even in the last patch. I've seen like a resurgence or like more confidence in the hero, so I feel like this will make those players continue experimenting, and if if they find a way to run the hero properly and successfully, then I could see OD being strong, because don't forget that this skill has really pretty much unlimited scalability in the late game, and there's been tons of items or intelligence carries, and we all know how, how strong OD was and how strong he can be, so pretty much his laning phase got neutered in the same way that Leshrax got neutered, so those... What happened with Leshrex, kind of similar to what's happening with OD. Too strong in mid, make him more akin to the safe lane. And then if he gets to the late game with the items, he has the same power level as he did before. Cop Floon says, Buff in a mid matchup in Voker vs. Alchemist. Is it worth going Quaswex? I won two games mid with Xor, but people say Quaswex is good. Um... I really don't think that Quaswix is that good. I just think that the the way that the game plays right now really benefits um, scalability, and we all know that Quaswix has no scalability. And if you're playing versus invoke, if you're playing versus an alchemist, um, especially in a pub, I think you're gonna want to go for the scalability just because, like, the game's gonna go late. He's going to get items, and you don't want to be out-farmed. Otherwise, he's just going to overwhelm you. Um, there are some moments where, strategically, you can go for Quaswex, where like you have a push strat, for example. Like so This is, applies more to competitive or team play. Maybe you have like a draw ranger strat or something like that. 
and you want to end the game versus Alchemist, Quaswex works with those kind of lineups. Quaswex mainly works in environments where your team's looking to fight early and potentially end the game early. I don't think in a pub setting it's a good idea. Okay, that was completely unrelated to anything. Lane creeps now give 20% of XP when denied by neutrals, rather than 0%. Normal player denies give 50%. So th I think there was a Reddit thread about this the other day, like PSA support players, when you pull, don't deny the creeps because it gives it gives the offlaner XP. But if the neutral creeps kill the creeps, then the offlaner gets 0% XP. So this is pretty much Valve's response to saying that might be sort of unintended or it's now that it's more mainstream knowledge, it's just like they're trying to give a little more to the offlane. It's always been like that with every patch. It's always been, how do we make the offlane a bit more robust? How do we give it some more advantages because they're so significantly disadvantaged? And with, you know, Iron Talon jungling and stuff, you don't really see the offlane being contested too much. Um... Although still a fair amount, this is just a a nice thing because you really, when you take the risk as an offlaner to go intercept the pull or go leech XP, you really should be rewarded somewhat. But the play here for you as a support now is to just still let the neutrals deny the creeps because, like it says, it's only 20% XP when the neutrals kill it compared to if you deny it, so you really don't want to be denying that if the offlaner is nearby. Okay. Oh, I, I think I skipped over that when I went for the OD. Oops. Bloodlust, mana cost reduced 75 to 50. I think they did something else with the with Ogre Magi the other day, or the other patch. Let me find that out. So overall, I, I think that's just... That's not. I think they're trying to incentivize the Ogre Magi. I don't think it is a game changer. I don't think it'll make him picked more if he wasn't picked already. Um, he does get picked in some niche situations, but let's see. Combined with 6.88 reduced Ignite mana cost to 98 each level, that was really nice. And increased multicast interval from 0.4 to 0.5. So... Basically, they're just reducing mana costs all across the board. They don't really need to buff any of his spells. The main reason Ogre Magi is not being played is a meta thing. Um, there's definitely potential for him to be played, but I think the hero's not really underpowered, um, especially with like Aether Lens fixing a lot of his issues they had before. But he's definitely not more preferable than the other supports. Just pretty much just put it that way. So I think that's just nice. Okay, Meepo agility growth increased from 1.9 to 2.2. That was a pretty surprising buff to me because I still think Meepo is pretty strong. I, I'm not sure how the most like premier Meepo players think, but there have been times when I've seen Meepos being played where... They do like the super stat efficient build where they go like Dragon Lance or even two Dragon Lances, even though he's melee, because it's giving the Meepos all around like very good stat gain. And I've been like crushed by that at times. I mean, obviously Meepo has to be good in the game, but I'm not sure if he really needed that. <laughs> Meepo's a really scary hero. He's very delicate to balance because only a couple of people actually play the hero really effectively but I th I've i played with people who still play Meepo and they still make the hero look disgusting so that is interesting only a Meepo player could tell you really okay stone form cooldown reduced from 26 to 20 I think they did some other buffs with Visage. I'm going to look that up right now. So, that's just, that's actually pretty, pretty 
relevant and actually I think that's significant as well. It's significant for the longevity of your birds, the survivability, and if you think about it, 20, 26 to 20 is a rather big jump. I mean, it, when it comes down to downtime and things like that, I can't explain it because I, I feel like when I play the game, I do a lot of things by feel, but I can I can tell by looking at the values that just by feel that it would be really strong. Let's see. 6.8 Gravekeeper's Cloak, increased armor per level. That was really nice. Metric resistance, increased grave chill. I think they did some other stuff. Reduced stone form stun delay from 1 to 0.85. And then they increased the stone form radius. And then radius again. So they're pretty much they've pretty much been buffing the gargoyles. Now again, I I don't know if Visage is going to be completely and totally viable just because it's not that he's weak, and actually a lot of these buffs make me want to try him out and get away with it in pubs. But I'm not sure if you can get away with it in competitive necessarily because. He is kind of a farm dependent support, but the way I like to play it and the way I've seen um, CDXQ play it is that he goes for a more like early game build, goes for like the greaves and just fights. And I think that's a really good way to use him. There's definitely plenty of fighting going on and plenty of opportunities for him to scale. The only issue is like, how does he lane? How does he hit levels? The main way probably is being in the safe lane, having a carry that can dominate the lane by himself, and letting the Visage do like a lot of pulling. I think Tome of Knowledge is a really good buff to Visage in general. He's probably just one of those heroes that's been forgotten about. He probably has the potential to be overpowered, like looking at the range of buffs he's received over the past couple of patches. So, I feel like he can make a comeback soon if someone learns how to figure, or if someone learns how to utilize him in a competitive game. But in pubs, for sure, I I I used to play Visage a lot in pubs. He's, he was still really strong, like patch or two ago. Arcane curse damage increased. They keep doing this every patch. I looked at these numbers and I was like. I was like, okay, it's just a couple per level. It's not that significant. I think they're just trying to bump it. I think combined with the uh, buffs that I've received in the past patches, it's probably going to be pretty effective. I personally really think Arcane Curse is a good spell. Some people will disagree with me, but I've played a ton of Silencer games. He's one of my favorite heroes to play in support, and I think he was already viable without this stuff, so... That's just nice. Brewmaster Boulder damage increase, 50, 100, 150. Okay, that's just nice. I mean, more scalability. That's his main problem, his main drawback as a hero. Brewmaster dispel magic to illusions and summon units increase from 500 to 850. So, this is interesting to test. I'll make a note of it and we'll we'll test it out in a demo. Let's see. We'll try to see what kind of interactions we can get going, and I'll look it up on Dota 2 as well. Dota 2 Wiki. Let's take a quick look here. Does it have its own thingy? Spell magic. Oh, it's already it's already updated. It's really nice. Fix spell mutant allies. Doesn't it doesn't say what? There's like no little notes about it. Kind of interesting. I was I would imagine that there'd be notes. We'll test that out. Press the attacks, attack speed increased from 60, 80, 100, 120 to 65, 90, 115, 140. 
It just buffs all around. Legion still has some issues. I could see press the attack being used like strategically with like Silibear, Aging Base, or any other hero like that. We've seen support Legion in the past. Bat gets picked a lot. Legion is good versus Bat and some other heroes. Um, it takes a pretty risky team to go for a risky pick like that when it comes to support. I don't like him on the core, he's just really snowball-y snowball in general. But I think this is probably one of his most important abilities for the late game, and if anything it makes him a better support. Slightly. Sniper's turn re-improved. Not sure how that feels, we'll have to test it out, but I'm sure anything like that's a buff. Sniper vision increased. Okay. It's nice little stuff. Warlock Golem's HP increased from 900, 1350, 1800 to 1500, 2000. So they're constantly, <clears throat> they're constantly buffing up the rocks, right? Warlock Dota 2. Check it out. Oh, is there a change log tab up here? Yeah, that makes it way easier. So, last patch they increased Warlock Golem health from 900, 1200, 1500 to 900, 1350, 1800. So it's pretty much always been 900 rank 1, now it's 1000. The level 16 rock seems pretty powerful. It's got it went it got a 500 HP bonus in one pat in one patch or two patches. It's pretty amazing. Rock chance. Doesn't really change the fact that the ultimate cooldown is so long. We've seen some crazy people like Wings running it. Not sure how to feel about that, to be honest. Warlock's notoriously like a high win rate hero in pubs. So we could probably see more Warlock, potentially. I'm, I'm most looking forward to the Dota buff section where there's trends. Because sometimes little... Small things like this affect the game um, trend-wise, and you can start seeing like pick rates and win rates going up, and maybe a small thing makes a hero jump up significantly. So we'll, we'll have to monitor that. The level 16 rock has 375 increase in HP per golem on the Ags. Well, it depends on how you're running the hero, because I don't. the way I see it is I don't see him run as a core so far, so I'm guessing... When I'm talking about him, I guess I'm assuming that it's a support. I don't think there's a place for him right now. Generally, Warlock's pretty good versus, um, like, not so much in the late game, but more about the mid game. So, if there was more, like, mid game timings, potentially, I wouldn't be surprised if someone picked it. I, I, I really wouldn't. But I would see it more as a support. Unless he had some really super dominant matchups. Yeah, and the and the golems always felt a little weak. But I think they've been constantly buffing it, so we can test that out later. Thirst bonus rescaled from 10, 20%, 30, 40 to 16, 24, 32, 40. This is a really nice change. I do think Bloodseeker's um, very viable. They've been giving him a lot of buffs. His Aghanims is really insane. Being able to rupture two people on the charge system. And a lot of times, when you play the Bloodseeker, you're going to want to level up your W. Because it gives you the most utility in the early fights. Gives you the damage and the silence. And having one value point of Thirst is pretty much the way that you start off your like 1 through 8. And eventually leveling it up 
I think this helps him kind of take fights earlier. And he's already pretty good at doing that, so. I like that buff. Lightning Bolt mini set increased from 0.1 to 0.2. I saw like a Reddit joke about that. Where, <laughs> like, literally double. I think that I'll test this out in a demo to see like how significant it feels. I'm going to take a note real quick. But I think Zeus's main downfall at the moment is he used to have this really significant utility with the static field breaking blink daggers and stuff. I think that was a really, really big nerf to the hero when they took it out of the game. But with the somewhat in like quote infinite scalability with intelligence, um Aether Lens plus spell damage, whatever. He is still doing a lot of damage, pretty much as much as he's always done, if not more. But I I really can't get over the blink dagger change. But I've seen I've seen some people experimenting it with like Miracle in NEL, picking it a couple times. It looks okay. They are always constantly buffing him and that's a really tricky thing because he's Zeus is always dominating pubs in the win rate, but obviously they're not tuning for pubs. So we'll have to keep an eye on the trends. Stampede slow duration increased from 1.5 to 1.8. That's a little nice change. We don't see much Centaur in general. Some teams have run it like Alliance. We've seen like Ag Centaur being insanely strong. No Stampede's relevant there. Mm. Seems okay. It's not. That's not a change where it's like, holy shit, I'm gonna pick Centaur now. It's the same trend as the entire patch in general. It's minor, minor buffs. Battlefield movement speed increased from 310 to 315. Seems okay. I can see that being significant in some early skirmishes. But it, it is kind of like what Sumail said, where the armor is a big deal. Because a lot of times when you're getting ganked early game, it's mostly about those right clicks that are doing the significant bulk of the damage and uh, whether you run fast or not, you're probably going to be slowed down anyway or just disabled, so that doesn't really help his survivability in that respect. More so if he like sees or feels there's a gank and like kind of inches towards like the opposite direction or like breaks the smoke before they can get in range and he can run away, that, that'll be more... Where it's uh, gonna be useful. It's whatever. A lot of a lot of heroes are not underpowered or overpowered. Really, it depends on the meta. The, the true overpowered heroes got nerfed, like Terrorblade, super OP. Maybe they're a bit lenient on like Elder Titan, but Terrorblade was more of a prominent issue. I feel like. Living armor cooldown reduced, 32, so pretty much 2 seconds on every level. That's more fun, um, seeing as this is literally like the only thing you can contribute um, outside of a team fight. He, sh he deserves to have a smaller cooldown, so good for him. Dismember strength base damage. Increase from 30, 40, 50 to 30, 45, 60. Oh, December strength Boys, based damage. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for resubbing. Or just subbing. I think it's a resub. They'll probably reset. Okay, anyway. I don't know how I feel about that. I think Pudge is. With the Aether Lens Ags, he became. Insanely scary in pubs for a minute. Kind of fell off. I think that's a lot to do with just meta things, you know. 
trends. Sandstorm cooldown reduced by 40, 34, 30, 26, 20, 18. So it's pretty much about the early game. That'll help with efficiency. That'll help with escape. I mean, he Sandking can be viable in the off lane, so that's a nice thing. But the way I see it is like Iron Town's just so good. Like a lot of these changes are a little. I don't. They're nice, but they're kind of late in my opinion. I mean, a lot of off laners are gonna Iron Town, and like they're trying to make the off lane a bit more accessible, but. Maybe that's a result of Iron Talon in general, I don't know. But, but it's a good direction, I guess. Probably just nerf Iron Talon, honestly. Then these changes will make more impact. Epicenter mana cost reduced. This is a pretty big deal. A lot of times when you're playing Sand King, you go for that rush to Blink Dagger, or... My personal favorite build is the Tranquil Soul Ring. You're a little light on mana. And Sand King's actually one of those heroes where you have to do those... It's very important that you do those quick calculations in your head as to can can I epi and then burrow strike because a lot of newer players they might not take it that into account and I've seen it a couple times where people will epicenter blink in and then they just don't have enough mana to stun um and there's been plenty of situations where I've had to be like hey wait I need like seven more mana so I can burrow after the epi. So, while it seems small, I know for a fact this would impact my gameplay on Sand King, and I, I really love that hero. So, I would, I would assume that it would impact other people's play, and that you, the calculations will change a little bit for your total like combination, but overall it's going to be reduced, and because of that, you'll be able to do things a bit quicker. Empower cleave AoE increase from 225 to 240. I guess that's nice. I mean, that's what this whole patch is. It's. I guess that's nice. So the big, the big loser here is the Terrorblade. This is the most significant nerf of the entire patch. It's going to affect the meta competitively, for sure. I guess Terrorblade is a very prominent hero, and he pretty much, the, the team with a winning Terrorblade will have an Aegis, and when they hit your base, you're going to be at a complete loss, because when you kill him, he'll just come back, and he'll destroy you. Not the case anymore, so rip Terrorblade, I suppose. Still viable, good change regardless. I, I, don't, I can't think of many heroes who respawn with Aegis and like maintain their state. Um, besides, like, you know, Lone Druid or whatever, but, like, even that was a change that was kind of recent in the grand scheme of Dota. So, yeah, I mean, if DP can't have Exorcism with Aegis, then you can't either, because that's just, it's just too powerful. It might as well be his ultimate. Okay. And let's see, who's who's the biggest winner? See if we can find that. Well, there's no real biggest winner, actually. I'd say... I would say that... Potentially... OD... And Warlock. But anyway, it, I, I don't think that matters. I really don't think that matters. It, those heroes will be picked if they're good in the game. So, let's move on and see if we can, like, uh, test out some of the things that we're looking at. So I, want, I want to know if Brewmaster Dispel, like, what it's affecting, what does it look like, What, how significant is the jump from 500 to, eight, to 850, I mean, that's 350 damage. But how does it feel? Because that's, for me, that's what Dota is about. How does it feel? Me 
So I guess, yeah, I'll create a hero. Create a hero. Phantom, Lancer. No, that's gonna summon... That's gonna summon Phantom Assassin, I'm sure. What would I call Phantom? Lancer? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's gonna sum yeah. Oh nice it did. Okay, that's great. And then give bots item Necro? Is that a thing? How do I get Necro 3? Give bots item Necro. Holy shit, it worked. That's the first time I've ever done that. Alright. And then we'll create some Okay, let's create Terror Blade, sure. Terror Blade. And then Um one more one more summon here like Lycan. Your mid tower ain't doing too well. What the hell? Okay, well we have two. See what it looks like. Did I even do anything? Hold on. That's a mean. That legitimately just killed one of them straight up. Because one of them's taking additional damage. 600%. Check out Terrorblade. I mean, this is a PL with no items though. But it has 2300 HP, so... For, for the smaller one, it didn't look that significant, to be honest. At least I have 1500 HP. Whoa! And they take extra damage because they're illusions. Give a Manta. That is interesting. So melee mantas take 350%, so we'll see if, if there's a difference. Oh, Yo, that's pretty nice, to be honest. There's a lot of added utility to this. Like, okay, let's let's try to beef this guy up. Let's, let's make, like, the best terror blade. Or at least, let's see, like, how good we can get him here. Give bots item Scotty, give bots item, what, Dragon Lance, give bots... I don't know. Treads. Or I don't know how to make treads. Whatever, we'll just skip that. What else would I turn? Manta, Scotty, Dragon Lance. That, I mean, that's pretty fair. That's pretty fair. So, okay, he, he has. Hate to be your maybe, mentality. let's give him the Belt of Giant Strength. I don't even know how to do that. Okay, nice, we did. Okay, so. Well, I. Yeah, Satanic, but... And I don't know about Heart of Thoras. Let's just... These are the basic items. This is enough. Level 25. So... This is pretty much like a... Your standard Terror Blade. Oh, man. And this is on a 4 second cooldown. So... Yeah, these illusions are fucked. That's actually a lot better than I thought it was. Let's see how that affects um, summons. Oh, I can't see it. <laughs> okay, so... I can't see the wolves, dude. Alright, anyway. There's no way it works on books, right? Oh, it totally does. It totally does. okay. Let's see effect, and it doesn't even wipe. It doesn't even wipe out the spirit. That's really nice. I wish I could see the wolves though. Let's see. That should fix everything. So I'm, I'm sure the wolves take reduced damage. So I'm sure it's not going to be that big of a deal. Oh, it's about fifty. I mean, whatever. Who cares about wolves? It's more about it's more about these bad boys. So imagine you're killing it. It's about it's less than half your HP. So 
it wouldn't really matter. So in eight seconds, you could pretty much two shot a Necro three with your Panda. That's actually a lot of a lot of added utility to the hero. That's a, that's. This is, so I would I would say Brewmaster is probably the biggest winner here because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of heroes that are illusion based and summon based, and we, we see necros, we see all this stuff. Okay, okay, the biggest defender would be like. Beastmaster, right? Create hero, Beastmaster. Oh, I didn't give him items. I guess I've capped it out. This is Magic Dab Bench, Tribe with Veil. Oh, that could be interesting. Okay. I mean, that would that seems like it would just be broken. I'm a beating my I'm under attack. Oh shit. I should have veiled first. Oops. Anyway, Oh my god. That I mean that seems pretty fucking strong to me. I mean Let's test that again. I wanna know how fast it's killing these it should one shot these, right? Pretty much one shot that. Oh goodbye. Now the que the question is how do you how do you run a Brewmaster now? Um, still pretty viable in, in mid lane. We've seen it on support at times. I'll take it from here. Is the dis does the dispel affect? Does the dispel work on level level one ulti? Like, is it the same damage? That's pretty important. Yeah, it's eight. It's eight fifty at every rank. So, you know, boom. Summon the warlock golem. <laughs> I'm always worried when I summon so many things. Uh oh, I don't know if I get summoned to enemy anymore. Yeah, because the thing is, that it just bugs out completely. I think we just summon a Zeus. Or I forgot his name is like Zeus. Yeah. I mean, does that feel long? Okay, let's let's make him walk. Your mid tower's coming apart. No, it doesn't feel long. Who's that going to affect? It's going to affect heroes like Brew potentially, just like heroes. Let's let's try to do it on this guy. No, he can no, he can still double walk, never mind. I don't I don't think it's that good. <laughs> I don't think it's that good. like I mean just look at it. Your mid tower needs a little help. I'll try to time it. I mean, I timed that as well as I could, and he's still doppel walked, and it's like, okay. So that that was pretty fail. Well, that is it. That that was those were some really surprising results, to be honest. With the, I think I'm just extremely. Impressed by the Brewmaster Dispel. Because, you know, it says 350 damage increase from 500 to 850. But you always got, got to take into account that illusions take extra damage. So you're just multiplying this value. And it seems like this ability is going to be able to scale really effectively for some of those illusion based heroes. There's a bug with Zeus then? Ah, oh, okay. 
That's it. So I'm. I'm gonna look at the chat now. I try not. I try not to look at the chat too much, just because I'm thinking about uploading that to YouTube. Just because, I might not. But I didn't want to have like this extra random stuff stuff popping up, even though it happened, like the two subs. So it was whatever. So what do you? I mean, what do you guys think? What did I miss? What do you think is important? I don't think you can despawn enemies. It does point one if you target the unit. Oh. Okay, let's try that again then. I didn't notice a difference, that's all I was saying. Review the Overwatch hero? I have no clue. Zeus is here. Let's make a hero like Brewmaster. Better get ready. Like where is he? Alright. That happens. I didn't need to do that. Okay. <laughs> oh, ye of little so I guess we're gonna Rival split a position of power. Was that noticeable? Oh yeah, this is this is birds. Uh, I think that one needs you need to play that. You need to play test that. Okay, let's try to time this out. Alright, fail. I forgot I'm supposed to click the ground. We can use this one. Yes. Three of me. Oh come on. We'll do it on this one. I don't know if this is really that big of a deal though. Actually, that that was a g decent amount of time. You can't tell if I'm overrating it or not. Let's try that with the PL again. If it if they fix it, if what you're saying is true, that seems like it's pretty decent. Very good. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, that's that makes way more of a difference. Like remember last time when we did it? Oops. Yes. I don't know, I can't tell, I don't even care anymore. Alright, what's next? 